Arthropod leg, Wikipedia article audio. The arthropod leg is a form of jointed appendage of arthropods, usually used for walking. Many of the terms used for arthropod leg segments are of Latin origin, and may be confused with terms for bones, coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, tarsus, ischium, metatarsus, carpus, dactylus, patella. Homonologies of leg segments between groups are difficult to prove and are the source of much argument. Some authors posit up to 11 segments per leg for the most recent common ancestor of extant arthropods but modern arthropods of eight or fewer. It has been argued that the ancestral leg need not have been so complex, and that other events, such as successive loss of function of the Hox gene, could result in parallel gains of leg segments. The appendages of arthropods may be either biramous or unirmous. A unirimous limb comprises a single series of segments attached end to end. A biramous limb, however, branches into two, and each branch consists of a series of segments attached end to end. The external branch of the appendages of crustaceans is known as the exopod or exopodite, while the internal branch is known as the endopod or endopodite. Other structures aside from the latter two are termed excites and endites. Exopodites can be easily distinguished from excites by the possession of internal musculature. The exopodites can sometimes be missing in some crustacean groups, and they are completely absent in insects. The legs of insects and myriapods are unirmous. In crustaceans, the first antennae are unirmous, but the second antennae are biramous, as are the legs in most species. For a time, possession of unirmous limbs was believed to be a shared, derived character. So unirimous arthropods were grouped into a taxon called Unirimia. It is now believed that several groups of arthropods evolved unirimous limbs independently from ancestors with biramous limbs, so this taxon is no longer used. Arachnid legs differ from those of insects by the addition of two segments on either side of the tibia, the patella between the femur and the tibia, and the metatarsus between the tibia and the tarsus, making a total of seven segments. The situation is identical in scorpions, but with the addition of a pretarsus beyond the tarsus. The claws of the scorpion are not truly legs, but are pedipalps, a different kind of appendage that is also found in spiders and is specialized for predation and mating. In Limulus, there are no metatarsi or pretarsi, leaving six segments per leg. The legs of crustaceans are divided primitively into seven segments, which do not follow the naming system used in the other groups. They are, coxa, basis, ischium, maris, carpus, propodus, and dactylus. In some groups, some of the limb segments may be fused together. The claw of a lobster or crab is formed by the articulation of the dactylus against an outgrowth of the propodus. Crustacean limbs also differ in being biramous, whereas all other extant arthropods have unirimous limbs. Myriapods have seven segmented walking legs, comprising coxa, trochanter, Prithemur, femur, tibia, tarsus, and a tarsal claw. Myriapod legs show a variety of modifications in different groups. In all centipedes, the first pair of legs is modified into a pair of venomous fangs called forcipules. In most amillipedes, one or two pairs of walking legs in adult males are modified into sperm transferring structures called gonopods. In some millipedes, the first leg pair in males may be reduced to tiny hooks or stubs while in others the first pair may be enlarged. Insects and their relatives are hexapods, having six legs, connected to the thorax, each with five components. In order from the body they are the coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, and tarsus. Each is a single segment, except the tarsus which can be from three to seven segments, each referred to as a tarsimere. A representative insect leg, such as that of a housefly or cockroach, has the following parts, in sequence from most proximal to most distal. Associated with the leg itself there are various sclerites around its base. Their functions are articular and have to do with how the leg attaches to the main exoskeleton of the insect. Such sclerites differ considerably between unrelated insects. The coxa is the proximal segment and functional base of the leg. It articulates with the pleuron and associated sclerites of its thoracic segment and in some species it articulates with the edge of the sternite as well. The homologies of the various basal sclerites are open to debate. Some authorities suggest that they derive from an ancestral subcoxa, 
In many species the coxa has two lobes where it articulates with the pleuron. The posterior lobe is the marone which is usually the larger part of the coxa. A marone is well developed in paraplaneta, the isoptera, neuroptera and lepidoptera. The trochanter articulates with the coxa but usually is attached rigidly to the femur. In some insects its appearance may be confusing, for example it has two subsegments in the adonida. In parasitic hymenoptera the base of the femur has the appearance of a second trochanter. In most insects the femur is the largest region of the leg, it is especially conspicuous in many insects with saltatorial legs because the typical leaping mechanism is to straighten the joint between the femur and the tibia, and the femur contains the necessary massive bipinate musculature. The tibia is the fourth section of the typical insect leg. As a rule the tibia of an insect is slender in comparison to the femur, but it generally is at least as long and often longer. Near the distal end there is generally a tibial spur, often two or more. In the apocrita the tibia of the foreleg bears a large apical spur that fits over a semicircular gap in the first segment of the tarsus. The gap is lined with comb-like bristles, and the insect cleans its antennae by drawing them through. The ancestral tarsus was a single segment and in the extant Prochura, Diplora and certain insect larvae the tarsus also is single segmented. Most modern insects have tarsi divided into subsegments, usually about five. The actual number varies with the taxon, which may be useful for diagnostic purposes. For example, the Terrigeniidae characteristically have five segmented fore and mid tarsi, but four segmented hind tarsi whereas the Cerulonidae have four tarsimeres on each tarsus. The distal segment of the typical insect leg is the pretarsus. In the Calembola, Prochera and many insect larvae, the pretarsus is a single claw. On the pretarsus most insects have a pair of claws unguis, plural unguis. Between the unguis a median ungatractor plate supports the pretarsus. The plate is attached to the apodeme of the flexor muscle of the unguis. In the Neoptera the parampodia are a symmetrical pair of structures arising from the outside surface of the ungatractor plate between the claws. It is present in many Hemiptera and almost all Heterotera. Usually the parampodia are bristly, but in a few species they are fleshy. Sometimes the parampodia are reduced in size so as to almost disappear. Above the ungatractor plate the pretorsis expands forward into a median lobe, the aralium. Web spinners have an enlarged basal tarsimere on each of the front legs, containing the silk-producing glands. Under their pretarsi, members of the diptera generally have paired lobes or pulvilli, meaning little cushions. There is a single pulvillus below each unguis. The pulvilli often have an aralium between them or otherwise a median bristle or impodium, meaning the meeting place of the pulvilli. On the underside of the tarsal segments there frequently are pulvillus-like organs or plantulae. The aralium, plantulae and pulvilli are adhesive organs enabling their possessors to climb smooth or steep surfaces. They all are outgrowths of the exoskeleton and their cavities contain blood. Their structures are covered with tubular or tenant hairs, the apices of which are moistened by a glandular secretion. The organs are adapted to apply the hairs closely to a smooth surface so that adhesion occurs through surface molecular forces. The typical thoracic leg of an adult insect is adapted for running, rather than for digging, leaping, swimming, predation or the like. The legs of most cockroaches are good examples. However, there are many specialized adaptations, including The embryonic body segments of different arthropods taxa have diverged from a simple body plan with many similar appendages which are serially homologous, into a variety of body plans with fewer segments equipped with specialized appendages. The homologies between these have been discovered by comparing genes in evolutionary developmental biology. Except in species in which legs have been lost or become vestigial through evolutionary adaptation, adult insects have six legs, one pair attached to each of the three segments of the thorax. They have paired appendages on some other segments, in particular, mouthparts, antennae and cerci, all of which are derived from paired legs on each segment of some common ancestor. Some larval insects do however have extra walking legs on their abdominal segments, these extra legs are called prolegs. They are found most frequently on the larvae of moths and sawflies. Prolegs do not have the same structure as modern adult insect legs, and there has been a great deal of debate as to whether they are homologous with them. 
Current evidence suggests that they are indeed homologous up to a very primitive stage in their embryological development, but that their emergence in modern insects was not the homologous between the Lepidoptera and Symphida. Such concepts are pervasive in current interpretations of phylogeny. In general the legs of larval insects, particularly in the Adotoragoda, vary more than in the adults. As mentioned, some have prolegs as well as true thoracic legs. Some have no externally visible legs at all. Examples include the maggots of flies or grubs of weevils. In contrast, the larvae of other coleoptera, such as the scarabidae and diticity have thoracic legs, but no prolegs. Some insects that exhibit hypermetamorphosis begin their metamorphosis as planidia, specialized, active, legged larvae, but they end their larval stage as legless maggots, for example the acrosarity. Among the Exopterigota the legs of larvae tend to resemble those of the adults in general, except in adaptations to their respective modes of life. For example, the legs of most immature Ephemeroptera are adapted to scuttling beneath underwater stones and the like, whereas the adults have more gracile legs that are less of a burden during flight. Again, the young of the Cocoidae are called crawlers and they crawl around looking for a good place to feed, where they settle down and stay for life. Their later instars have no functional legs in most species. Among the Apterigota the legs of immature specimens are in effect smaller versions of the adult legs.